Okay, great. Glad to be here and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, moving be uh, beyond digitization or digitalization, depending on what word you like to use. Uh, as Andy said, I'm the CEO of Aspen Technology. So if you look at the statistics, uh, the, uh, the World Economic Forum states that over a trillion dollars in value is available to the oil and gas firms uh, from the use of digital technologies. At, um, at the same time, uh, you know, Deloitte and McKinsey have done their own surveys where these companies are identifying our firms that uh, for some of you, uh, the implementation of a digital solution looks like, it feels like an insurmountable or highly complicated process. Uh, at the same time, uh, a lot of uh, you have, are of the opinion that there's a lot of hype here and uh, the results from implementing these solutions are, are highly mixed. Uh, we've conducted our own survey and uh, out of that, about 38% of companies believe that they're not going be, to benefit from uh, analytics, advanced solutions, digitalization over the next two years. And, um, also, uh, Cisco did their own survey, and uh, really only about 15% of customers state that uh, their uh, IoT initiatives have been a complete success. So while there's a lot of interest uh, and hype around this, there's also a skepticism, failures, and some successes. And, and the fundamental question is, uh, what's the right path forward in order to derive value from digitalization and digitization? So at the same time, if you, if you look at performance uh, of companies around the world, and this is for the chemicals industry by region, you see that there is a normal distribution uh, of performance between the uh, low, lower performing companies and the higher performing companies, and it is the same distribution around the world, centered a little bit, uh, uh, the, the profitability is, is a little bit different, but, but you see the, the, the same behavior. And the fundamental question, then is what differentiates the top performers from the bottom performers in these charts. Uh, we are of the opinion, as we travel the world and we talk to customers, that the fundamental difference between top performers and bottom performers is a focus on operational excellence. And operational excellence is, is not a one and done initiative, it is a continuum over 30, 40 years, and, and that's what we see in the best performing companies. These are companies that have been focused on creating greater value from their assets on a continuous basis, year to year. It's not about the, 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 the initiative of the moment or the fashion of the moment. Uh, it is about a focus across the entire asset life cycle, uh, starting 30, 40 years with the modernization of analog systems to distributor control systems, and then the implementation of advanced solutions, eventually the internet, eventually mobility, and now today initiatives such as smart manufacturing, industry 4.0, or digitization, digitalization. It is a continuum. And, and of course, uh, over the last two, three, five years, the heavy emphasis on, on analytics um, and, and, and really deriving greater insights from the data that is, uh, that has been available in your systems as a result of, of the installation of those digital control systems uh, 20, 30 years ago, and, and, and using the insights from that data to drive greater performance, capture greater value, and therefore operational excellence. We also find that companies that focus on operational excellence also have a very pragmatic approach, a very pragmatic roadmap to capturing that value. It's a very methodical process, a very thoughtful process on how value is going to be created, and, and eventually is about organizational excellence, because it's not a once and done initiative again, it's about the implementation of these solutions, but then it's about the sustainment of, of, of those solutions, and that organizational excellence that provides for continuity uh, around, around the value creation and value capture spectrum. Uh, so Aspen Tech, of course, uh, we've been in this business for the last 35, 36 years. We've introduced a new strategy in the last two, three years, 
around asset optimization and really focused on the entire asset life cycle. If, if you look at the install base from our solutions in the process industries uh, over the last 35 years, we estimate that uh, our customers generate about 50 billion US dollars per year on uh, on va of value. Uh, at the same time, when you look at the maintenance space and reliability improvement in your asset operations, the value potential that exists from improving reliability in your assets dwarfs that $50 billion. And, and this is one of the reasons why we've invested in this area. We've acquired technologies uh, around machine learning, deep analytics, uh, reliability analysis and assessment in order to help you not only uh, improve the reliability of your assets, but also integrate those technologies with the install base of advanced solutions already in, in your facilities to, e to create even more value for, from, from those solutions. Uh, and then lastly, it's about organizational excellence. And, and organizational excellence uh, is not a once and done, it's continuous, it's a series of continuous business process improvements to make sure that you're capturing the value from your solutions, but it's also about a continuous learning organization. Uh, it's about the skills development, the learning networks, uh, centers of excellence, and of course, uh, more and more today, on-demand education. There's a new generation of engineers that have a very different experience on, on how they want to learn. Uh, they want instant uh, learning uh, via video, and this is something that, that we're emphasizing. So with that, I want to thank you and look forward to the panel discussion. Andy, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you.